All right, so on our notes, let's make a couple of comments here. Um, this is what we will call the three pillars of SEO. There's three big concepts that are going to hold up a lot of our efforts in SEO. One of them is longevity, and we've got authority and content. Longevity, authority, content. This and many other factors affect your SEO. But if we think about these three and how we can improve or use these three, it'll help us toward SEO. Because remember, we're doing this the hard way. We're doing it the, the method where uh, we're not paying we're not paying for placement and such so um, if I make another note here we have paid SEO another term for that is PPC pay per click we're paying um, to get up higher than the competition and that's versus organic SEO Paid SEO, organic SEO. So I can say I, I can say I'm gonna put you know a hundred dollars. I'm gonna have a pool of one hundred dollars. I pay Bing and or Google a hundred dollars. My result appears, my page appears on the results, I get impressions, and then when someone clicks my page, I get deducted some amount of money from my hundred dollars pay per click. I'm, I'm paying for every click that I get. Um, how much? It's going to vary a lot. Because basically what you're doing, one way to do it is to buy keywords. If someone searches web design, I paid for that keyword and I'm higher up on the results. How much? It's really going to range. With 1.6 billion possible results, it's probably going to be expensive. But let's say I'm choosing some keywords that it can be five cents per click. So if I've invested five, if I've invested one hundred dollars, that's going to be a lot of clicks. I'm paying to get my site visible, but then when they click is when it deducts from my retainer account, so to speak. Some keywords are twenty-five cents a click. Some keywords are two dollars twenty-five cents a click. It's going to depend. It's really going to range. Five cents, two dollars, it's going to range. So that one hundred dollars could take you far or not so far. Organic SEO is the free stuff that we're talking about, but it's a longer uphill battle. After you set the foundation of what, we're, what we'll be talking about here, it's sort of going to then snowball. It's going to pay for itself. It's going to keep growing. There is a value, this is not a dirty word, it is a value, there is a value to doing paid SEO. Especially when you're first starting off. Maybe you set up a budget of $20 and see how far that gets you. Maybe you will get a few hits, a few, a few views, a few hits. Maybe those hits turn into sales. And then that sale, it made up for the $20 you spent. In my company, we engage in both. We do the organic stuff a lot, and once in a while we also do the paid SEO. And paid SEO is not just paying to Google or Bing, but also to Facebook, to Twitter. So Google, Bing, Facebook, Twitter, etc. You can pay to have your company show up a little more often on Facebook. You can pay to have your company show up a little bit more often on Twitter etc Pinterest etc um, and that's a viable thing it's not a dirty word it's not a dirty trick at all it can be abused of course why did I search for PMD interactive and some other company about ADHD show up well they're probably trying to hit as many people as possible and uh, the companies will to a certain degree gladly take your money to appear on the results that might not really be the best for you because then why would my ad about uh, you know pet sitting show up on uh, people searching for realtors? Yeah, I saw a thousand uh, impressions and one conversion. 
was the money that I spent worth it? If I'm trying to hit people that are not related to the target business. So organic SEO, one of the things we have to, or three of the things we have to think about there are these concepts here, longevity, authority, content. Longevity. How long have you had your online presence? And I say online presence very generically because you don't have to have a website, technically. You can be a superstar on Instagram. You can be amazing on Pinterest. You can have an eBay account that you're selling stuff. Whatever your online presence is, we're trying to optimize it. How long has it existed? Sometimes when you do a search and you keep seeing that competitor there, that competitor there over and over, that's because they probably had a website months longer than you, years longer than you. So the longer you exist online, the better. It helps your SEO. The search engines look at that as well. Because any spammer can create a website today and make an amazing looking website created today to trick people into buying genuine, authentic Rolex watches. But Rolex.com existing for 20 years on the web is still going to get more hits because of their longevity of existence. Well, that means if I'm going to build my website this year, I'm at a disadvantage because my competitor has had hers for two years. Okay, the way to combat that is to deal with authority. Authority is why should you be ranked well? What can you provide on a search page results, search results page? What can you provide that someone will want to click on? That someone will see that and say, that's what I want, and click on it. Um, why should you be ranked? That is closely tied to content. <coughs> the stuff that you are publishing to answer the why should someone click on you. I showed you earlier, I did a search, how to use Peach Like a Pro. I want to learn that brand new social network. We published a blog post, you know, a couple hundred words, and a video, like a 12-minute video. There's a couple of things there. We saw that was number one. Um, it's content that we create to give us an authority over a topic. We're going to publish blog posts about social media, about marketing, about human resources, about photography, all of this stuff that we do. We're going to publish blog posts. We're going to tweet about it. We're going to post on Facebook on a regular basis. We're creating content for the search engines to find. We're creating content that people will then want to share I found that great article about whatever. I want to share it with my friends and family. They will see it. They might think it's nice. They'll follow the link back to my website. Traffic. So I'm creating content to build authority that will negate if I don't have a lot of longevity. So all of these three are big topics, which we'll talk about, about as much as possible. I'll give you a great link about ideas of content. And content, very generically, is what are you creating? The stuff. Are you tweeting? Are you posting on Facebook? Are you blogging? What are you doing? What's the content you're creating to get found? I have a question. In the Facebook yes. post, what, um, the, does uh, how you label a picture, the words you use, does that affect keywords? If somebody's not just looking for the name of the business, but you definitely a person or something, will that help definitely. You also? Definitely. Every everything that you do is, is, is relevant nowadays to the search engines. Okay. How so you label the picture, the picture, what you write, everything. Okay, so the label of the picture you use a certain word, it could, you know, if you say orange and somebody's actually looking for the show, orange is gonna be black, mm -hmm. but it could Yes. Be well. Exactly. It's all related. It's all, uh, in short, yes, every bit of content that you create is designed to help you get found. Okay. So it does all matter. 
Um, let me show you uh, a website for ideas of creating content because that's a nebulous word right there, like what specifically do I create? I'll show you a great blog post from one of my colleagues that uh, has great ideas. Let's go to the web and let's go to this website brandgfx.com, brandgraphics.com. This is one of uh, my colleagues. We work together on projects here and there, but the the people in this company are also very good at this stuff, marketing and such, graphic design. Let's go to brandgfx.com. Brand graphics. Marketing company, okay, great, why would I hire them? Look at the portfolio, etc. But let's look at the blog. On the top right corner, click blog. A blog is basically a website where you update it on a regular basis. Blogging is very important for modern SEO. Blogging is important for SEO because you publish content on a regular basis. What's regular? Whatever you want it to be. Um, some of the most successful websites with a lot of traffic publish a new blog post every day, several times a day, but they've got a stable of writers that can do it. You as a beginner, I would say, as a beginner, it's very good to publish one blog post per month. Once a month, write a blog post. How long? Well, again, the more you write, the more content you're creating, to build your authority on top of your longevity. The more that you write, the better, to a certain point, of course. But as a beginner, write one blog post a month of at least 100 words. It will be much better, 300 words, 500 words. Eventually, you get diminishing returns. 1,000 words, because who's going to read that? Um, so, one blog a month, 100 words. You're going to see you can create 100 words relatively quickly. And you're going to be blogging, you're going to be writing articles on the topic of your company. And that's a big nebulous thing. We have a, web, we have a class about blogging. We'll get into details there if you take that class. We do brainstorming activities and everything. But my company has a blog. Brand Graphics over here has a blog. If we look at Brand Graphics blog, look at in this particular blog post, it's a quick uh, a quick blurb, 80-20, 20% of your input produces 80% of your output. Another quick info here, something deeper, tips to help make annually updating your passwords relatively painless, uh, next page, and so forth. There's a blog article that I want us to see here. Search in the blog keyword comprehensive. There's also blog posts here that are also organized into topics and such. And again, the blog class, we focus on blogging. But uh, search comprehensive. And then the top result should be the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. When you see that article, that blog post, go ahead and click it. It says, yes, we know this list is by no means comprehensive. Our apologies. It's better than the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. Because this stuff's always changing. New techniques are being invented and everything. And this was originally published on March 2013, and it's been updated a little more recently. And so this goes on to give you ideas. This is for you. These are ideas for you. It's not going to tell you every step. It's just a lot of ideas. This would be the perfect blog post if it was fully, you know, annotated and explanatory and such. But that's a lot of effort. The point of this is to think about things that you can do to market your company. 
And so, taking a few of these adver advertorials, press releases, infomercials, print, podcasts. Question? To some degree, yes. Um, but you have to be careful about keyword stuffing in that to make content simply full of keywords to get ranked. There is a purpose to this article in that it lists concepts with an explanation. So if it was just the keywords, that would be pretty bad for SEO. But this has an introduction, an explanation, and then this, and then comments, and uh, it's a real blog post. And so the point of this is to get ideas. Well, what if I create uh, contests or do online surveys? Again, none of these are, are linked or really expounded upon. You have to inform yourself. Like white papers, I don't know what that is. You can usually select any keyword on a website, right-click it, and usually there will be some sort of search. So short-form video, Vine, Instagram, I have never heard of Vine. Look it up. So this is to give you ideas of what to do, of content to create, uh, to market your business, to get found by the search engines, to get you traffic. So find a university or professional course in your area and offer to be a guest speaker. That's a way to do that as well. Let's say you're really talented in the world of web design. Uh, give a free presentation on web design, and at the end of the course, people are going to come in and say, what's your business card? Can I have your business card? That could get you more, more business. You can publish an ebook. Now that anyone can create a digital book, you don't need Simon & Schuster to say OK to your book. You can publish it yourself on your own website on Amazon, Kindle, whatever. More ways to get content, authority, and longevity for yourself. Things you might not have thought of. Zip code mailings. Um, you can buy zip codes at the post office and say, mail this uh, postcard to these two zip codes, because I'm targeting that local business. You can volunteer. You can get sponsorships newsletters, engage in SEO and SEM, blog, go to conferences or meetups, trade shows, which is networking, get a link from Wikipedia. One of the most popular websites in the world is Wikipedia. What if you had a link from Wikipedia to your business? That could bring you a lot of traffic. So anyway, I wanted to show you this because here are ideas for marketing. This is just, this is opening the door. You have to walk in and you have to do a lot of effort to learn what these things are, uh, learn how to do them and be effective. They are always on a website, yes, they have to exist online, but on your own website, yes or no, sure. Um, it could exist on your website like this one, there's a section of the blog on the website. You could create your blog on another website, you can create it on Blogger, on WordPress.com, LinkedIn nowadays has a place for you to write blogs, you can create them anywhere. The thing, though, is that if you don't create it on your website, you have to remember to add links back to your website, or else you're going to get stuck on that dead end of that blog. You have to have links from that external blog back to your website. Easier way to get around that is build your blog on your website, because it's on your website and you get the traffic there. Yes? When you do your blog on your website, you can link it like to your fan page. Can you link it to LinkedIn, too? Yeah. Like, it just has the little dots on top if they just do that and you get to the link? Yeah, basically any link of any online website, online presence, you can just take that link, copy and paste it, and you've got a link. That's it. So you, you can and you should. You should always link all your, your resources together, all your platforms. On my website, I've got my Twitter connected. On my Twitter, once in a while I'm going to tweet about my Facebook. 
And on my Facebook, I'm going to post sometimes maybe about my Pinterest. So it's all interconnected. And that's creating this content out there for the search engines to find. So this is a good resource to look at. Uh, let me show you another resource. Uh, because SEO, these concepts are always changing. It's a moving target. The search engines get smarter at showing you what you, th what you want to see. How do you keep track of it? One is to go directly to the search engines and learn their latest techniques. We'll see that next time. But what we can also do is read blogs about the industry of search engines. And here's one that I can recommend. There's many of them out there. If you know one, let me know also. But here's one that I recommend. SearchEngineLand.com 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 New in AdWords, stage campaign changes in drafts, test changes in experiments. Bing rolls out red carpet for the Oscars with its Academy Award experience. So Bing has partnered with the Oscars. Since 2013, Bing share up five points. Ask and AOL going way off, way of the BlackBerry. So uh, it's showing here 5% increase in this amount of time for Bing at the detriment to the other search engines. So this is where you keep up to date with everything that's going on. And it's a big world of things to learn, of course. But uh, here's one place for free. This is also related to the Search Marketing Expo, which is a big old conference in San Jose that you can go attend and talk to the pros of SEO and get contacts and all of that this and many other conferences out there um, focus on a variety of topics. Here's a whole conference all about SEO and SEM. And of course it's not free. You have to um, pay some amount. If I can find a price somewhere. Pass rates. Here we go. Only $1,800 on-site. But for for the various days that this is active. So this is a big professional workshop with big professional prices. And so um, if you don't want to go to the conference, many of these websites like this can provide this. And this is one of the big ones. Does anyone know of any other good uh, SEO and types of websites out there? I'll bring up a few as the class goes on, but this is one of the ones very valuable because there's articles on SEO, on SEM, on mobile, on local. If you're a local business, you have your own challenges as well. If you're on Main Street, you need to deal with SEO optimization focused on local. People are going to search for a location. Specific articles on the big two, Google and Bing. And again, you may have never heard of Bing until today. You may have never used Bing, and you may never know anyone that, or have known anyone until now that has used Bing. But it's increasing in market share. The thing about Bing is uh, uh, they have they have contracts with big players, deals. When the iPhone first came out in 2007, Apple had a contract with Google. So when you search on your iPhone, it would automatically give you Google results. The contract eventually ran out, and guess who they got their contract with now? Bing. Apple now has, their, has a contract with Bing that when you search on your iPhone, you get Bing results. It doesn't matter oftentimes to the average user. I just want to know a good restaurant. And it doesn't matter if it's Google, Bing, Yahoo, AOL, whatever. I want results. And at the moment, there's that alliance. Yes? So is Safari paired with Bing? Yes. What I was also getting at was that um, Apple made a contract as well. They had the Bing search, the Google search built in, and they, they switched over to Bing, I believe, at the moment. Um, and it's not that you have to use Bing. I love Google, and I want to use Google all day long. Great. You can change your, your options. 
and I notice every time, because I've got Bing on all my computers, and every time I go to Google, it, at the top it begs me, wouldn't you like to change to Google? So, uh, whatever works, works. But I like the Bing search a little better, because I like to go to Bing, I like to see those the news items at the bottom, and I like to see that cool photo at the top. Sometimes they animate it like today. They had a really beautiful photo of Pluto yesterday, the, the planet, the subplanet. They had a really cool photo of Pluto yesterday. Google doesn't really have that. You want to mute that, please? Question. Um, Google Chrome has a bunch of plugins that you can do, like for Pinterest, etc. Yeah. Does Bing have that? Yeah, that's actually the that's the Pinterest that's the company Pinterest that's the one creating the plugin for Chrome. Okay. So it's more about the company adding that extra plugin, and and they they do have it. So, um. If you buy, let's say you're in the market for a brand new laptop or, or, or desktop computer and you want to get a Windows computer, you go to Walmart, Target, Fry's, whatever, you go buy a Windows computer. Windows is from the company Microsoft. Bing is from the company Microsoft. So you get a brand new Windows computer, it's got Bing search built in. You can change it to Google, of course. You're totally allowed to do that. But built in is Bing. And Windows computers still outsell Mac computers by a huge margin. So more people are seeing Bing, consciously or not. My friend bought a, um, a Prius, and we were driving in it, and it had a cool little console between the, the seats, and I looked at it, and it had search, and that was Bing search. So she's got Bing search on her, on her Prius there. And yes, Google still has 65% market share, whatever, hundreds of billions of searches, and it's still very important to optimize for, for Google. Um, but you don't want to discount Bing, just because it's only got 20%. And what we'll be talking about is how to, how to optimize for both. And most of the techniques we talk about are cross-platform anyway. There's a few things here and there that are a little different that we'll be made aware of, but whatever we're doing for one is basically working for the other as well. Yahoo, at the moment, it's in third place or so, but it's got a contract with Bing and Google. So when you search Yahoo, you're getting results from Bing and Google anyway. So whatever we are doing to optimize for Bing and Google, it's going to trickle down to Yahoo for people that use Yahoo. Let me give you then... Um, a handout so that we can do an activity. Any questions so far? Okay, let's let's go to the network folder. Let me remind you where that is again. Go to your desktop here. <coughs> On the top left, open up computer, double click computer, and then you will see network location and classroom data drive Z. You have to access this on our computers. If you've got your own tablet or laptop, unfortunately, you can't access our network computer, our network folder. Open up classroom data, drive Z, as in zebra, and then you'll find our class. It's alphabetical, campus. SEO Friday. Whenever I give you handouts and such, they will be here. So go ahead and open that. And then drag, don't just double click it, drag the new file I gave you here, Campos SEO 1, long tail strategy, drag that to your desktop. And again, the printer's off at the moment. I'll turn it back on during the next break. But drag that from my folder to yours, and then we will get started. Is anyone having any trouble? getting that file. If you didn't bring a USB flash drive to take it with you, you can email it to yourself as an attachment. But the thing about these computers is they have a software called Deep Freeze. On the bottom right corner, there's a little polar bear staring at you. That's Deep Freeze which means that the computer's state is frozen, which means that when you turn off the computer, and you restart it, anything you did, anything you saved will be erased. 
So if you copy this to your desktop, when you come back next time, it's not going to be there anymore. Anything that you save on our computers will not be there when you come back next time. Deep Freeze takes it back to the factory settings. So whatever we... Exactly. Anything we do on the web browser also will get erased. So that's one of the reasons why we have this, for your protection. If you leave a file here, if you forget to log out, it'll erase everything, goes back to normal. The downside, of course, is anything that you leave on these computers will not be here the next time you come back. Let's look. We'll, we'll look at that PDF in just a moment. Let me um, talk about something conceptually. Long tail strategy. Let me draw a picture. I'm going to draw a picture. This is a this is a simple x and y coordinate chart. And um, on the bottom we've got keyword on the x axis we've got keyword and then on the vertical on the uh, on the vertical on the y axis we've got frequency frequency and keyword then we'll draw a line that looks something like this What we're showing here is there are some keywords that have a lot of frequency. Some keywords that a lot of people use, like web design. I saw one and a half billion results. That keyword has a lot of frequency of use on a website and people paying for that keyword. So if you also use a keyword in that area, you're going to be a needle in a haystack, very hard to find. There are some keywords over here that are more specific. Best Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista. That's going to have less people using it, right? Lower frequency. You're going to be a little easier to find. So nowadays, it's about developing this, which is known as the long tail keyword strategy. The long tail keyword strategy. Keywords is a concept you hear over and over in SEO. What are the terms that people are going to search for to find me? But modern SEO is about the long tail keyword. Because when the web was younger and Yahoo ruled, uh, Yahoo would look at your website and see that you use the keyword web design over and over. I would have, for example, my address, victorwebdesign.com. I would have a logo at the top, <coughs> web design. I would have my first paragraph that said, I'm a web design pro. I would have everywhere mentioning the keyword over and over, web design. And that worked in the beginning. But if it worked for the good guys, <coughs> it works for the bad guys, the spammers the hackers, the crackers, everyone. And so the hackers, the spammers, everyone started to abuse this because they started to then put every word in the dictionary on their site because I'm going to get a hit there from some word, from a hundred keywords on my site. And that would work for a little bit. The search engines got smarter and they're saying, okay, now that doesn't work. Keyword stuffing. I'm putting too many keywords that don't even relate to the concept of my site, just to get hits. So, long tail. It's supposed to be that this is a little drawing, here's the cow over here, and here's its tail. It's just the longer part out here with less hits, less frequency of a keyword, because we're being specific. We're not going to get found with web design, but I might get found with affordable web design 
for restaurants in Eastlake because that's what a real person is going to search for. I've got a business in Eastlake. I want an affordable website. I want to hire someone. I'm not going to search for web design. I'm going to search for affordable web design in Eastlake for restaurants because I'm a restaurant. That's the long tail keyword. Less competition there. So this is what we'll be engaging in in this class. It's not just about basic keywords. We saw that result was too nebulous. We need to be specific. Modern SEO is long tail keyword strategy. <coughs> this and many techniques that we can that we'll try to get to as much as possible are modern SEO. One technique that the bad guys used to use also was um, is it would look clearly like a spam site when on the home page at the bottom there's suddenly a paragraph full of keywords. What the spammers would do is they would type on their website white text on a white background. Invisible text. I can't see it, white text on a white background, I can't see it, but the search engines could see it, and it would fool the search engines for a bit, and they would rank well. But then the search engines caught on to that trick, and now that concept doesn't work. That's known. So let's say, um, well, I'll say it like this. Um, black hat SEO, or bad SEO techniques, Techniques that the spammers use, techniques that are abused, techniques that the search engines don't condone anymore. Black Hat SEO. There's many companies out there that will want to get hired for SEO, and they may engage in Black Hat SEO. They may engage in techniques that will give you a big bump quickly, and then when the search engine catches on, they're cheating, suddenly you're back down. The search engine will say, oh, no problem, pay us a little bit more and we'll fix it. Great, you pay a little bit more, they use some other black hat technique, you're high again, they catch you again, you're down again. And in a certain amount of times, no amount of trying to do the good things anymore will work anymore. You've been labeled as a spammer, and it's hard to get out of that negative <coughs> SEO jail. <coughs> On the other side, there's white hat SEO. The good techniques. The good, the official techniques. For SEO. And guess what? This class is all about white hat SEO. We're going to be talking about techniques that are not going to get you penalized, that are not going to get you marked as a spammer. Again, this method is the longer way, the more complicated way, but in the long term, the better way. I get people coming into this class that say, I used to be number one, and my SEO company, they can't fix it anymore. What am I doing wrong? It's not that you're doing something wrong, it's that you hired a black hat SEO firm. A firm that is going to use the bad techniques that'll give you a quick bump and to show customers they know what they're doing, but that's not going to last. In the middle, there's actually also... What's in the middle? Gray hat SEO. Techniques that perhaps are not fully devalued at the moment, but that could be devalued later, and then you're in trouble. Sure hasn't been caught yet. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle. Haven't been caught. And they chose those names, because in the old cowboy movies, when the bad guys came in and shot up the place and took over the town, what kind of hat were they wearing? Black. Black hat. And when the sheriff came in to clean up the town, what hat was he wearing? White hat. white hat. So black hat, white hat, and gray hat. We we don't talk about. We don't really deal with. I mentioned what's what might be black, what might be white, what might be gray. But in this class, we're going to engage in white hat SEO. And what I said about putting white text, <coughs> white text on a white background, hiding your text, that's black hat. Um, we're going to avoid these things. So actually. One of the techniques nowadays of black hat SEO
keyword stuffing. Back to my long tail. I want to use web design. And I'm going to use web design over and over and over and over to try to rank for it. That's not going to work. You're going to be a needle in a haystack and keyword stuffing, reusing your one keyword over and over. The search engine see that as the mark of a spammer. Keyword stuffing. Reusing generic search terms too much. What is too much? Some of the things of some of the concepts of SEO, most of the concepts of SEO are proprietary, are secret, trade secrets. Google claims to have the better way to rank. Bing claims to have the better way to rank. Yahoo claims to have the better way to rank. So they've got these trade secrets, company secrets. They're not going to tell us webmasters every positive technique to engage in because then the competitor will steal it and vice versa. So some of these techniques are not going to be obvious, but at a place like searchengineland.com, they run their business thinking of concepts of SEO, running tests, and checking the results and publishing the, the answers and say, it looks like there's a strong correlation between using this technique for good SEO and those techniques for bad SEO. So we will be able to go read the manual of SEO for Google and Bing, and we're going to follow the manual. But there's things that the manual will not say that are trade secrets. Keyword stuffing, reusing your words over and over, basic keywords. What's also not so good nowadays is known as uh, an EMD, exact match domain. That's me having a website called victorswebdesigneastlake.com. In the old days, it was gold to have a website with the keywords you're trying to rank for. I want to get ranked, I want to get found for web design. I better have web design in the title, in the old days. For me, as a legitimate person, I wanted that. But then the spammers did it over and over and over and corrupted this technique. So now it's not important. You don't have to have your keywords in your title. Um, so something like this would appear to the search engines a little bit more like spam. Instead, you know, vcdesigns.com, that would be fine. because I'm not trying to get those exact keywords into my title. You say, well, how will the search engines know what my site's about? With the many other techniques we're talking about, blogging and on Twitter, and the videos that I create, and the long tail keywords that I'm going to talk about. So you don't need your keywords in your address anymore. If you're trying to get that web address and someone else has it, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. Create a web address that is short and memorable. That's going to be better than trying to settle for the original, <coughs> the original Victor's Web Designs Eastlake.com. That's going to be. That's going to look very spammy. You've probably seen websites like that. That you've stumbled upon websites that that are spam that are full of full of you know counterfeit merchandise and such. But they've got that perfect name. It's not perfect anymore. It doesn't matter. Because before you heard about it, before you, before you knew what it was, what's a Facebook? What's a Twitter? What's a YouTube? What's a Flickr? What's, what's a Peach? You know, all of these things that nowadays have these esoteric names that no one knows what it is, what it means, but we know what it is. That's modern websites. There's all of these weird, crazy names nowadays, and they don't have to have a specifically known name. What's a refinery29.com? I don't know, but I visit it every day and I love it. Because of the blog posts they write and the content they publish and the pictures and everything. So you don't need to have an exact match domain. Nowadays, it's not a very good technique anymore. 
If you currently have a website with an exact match domain, you have to evaluate with other techniques we'll talk about, is it actually helping or hurting you? And sometimes the best answer to fix your SEO problems is to start over. Sometimes it's the best answer to claim a brand new website, .com, .net, whatever, and start over and start with the right techniques. Because if you are down on the, <coughs> down on the pit of negative SEO, it's going to be hard to get out of it. Because the search engines, unfortunately, nowadays have to be have to operate under um, guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. Guilt by association. If your website is linked to spam websites, you're a spammer. I believe you that you're not a spammer, but the search engines won't. If you've got all of these black hat and gray hat techniques on your site, the search engines are going to say you're a spammer. I believe you that you're not, but the search engines won't. And so sometimes it's better to start over than to try to dig yourself out of that pit. The book that I mention in the syllabus, the books that I mention, the 2016 and beyond is a good, if you're starting all of this, it lays a good foundation to start with. The SEO checklist is a little bit geared more towards people that have already had a website and maybe now want to make sure it's optimized, or if you had a website that doesn't rank as well anymore, these are th things you might want to do to try to rank higher. So what we want to do then is figure out our long tail keywords. We want to figure out what are these specific search terms that people might search for. There's a couple of ways to do it. Here's, here's one way. Now, let's open our PDF of, of the long tail strategy. <clears throat> Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have a good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found with authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define yours. Notice I use the hedge word potentially. One thing to be very careful of, as you learn the concepts in this class, and you see that, well, I understand them, but I'm busy running my business. I don't have time for Twitter. I don't have time for webmaster tools. I don't have time for blogging. I've got to run my business. I'll hire someone. Great. Perfectly viable. But hopefully at least you know the techniques and some of the keywords and jargon and such so that someone doesn't try to trick you into getting hired. Because one indicator that you might be dealing with a shady SEO company, a black hat company, is that they guarantee results. No reputable SEO company is going to guarantee results in a time period. They're not, if someone is saying, you're going to rank better in a month, you're going to rank better in a week, you're going to rank better in nine months, anyone that gives you a deadline that you're going to do well is probably going to do black hat SEO they're probably going to take some of the fee that you're paying them and do pay-per-click for you, maybe without even telling you. They're going to take some of that money, put you number one on results and such, and you may rank well in the short term, but then the contract is over with them, they stop paying for those keywords, you're back to where you were before. So any company that is guaranteeing some amount of result in some amount of time you know, hang up the phone. They are probably not going to be the best for you in the long term. You can set benchmarks and see how are we doing in three months? How are we doing in five months? What's working, what's not? Next time when we talk about the webmaster tools, we'll be able to see our return on investment, our return of investment. We'll be able to see. I've tried to get traffic from Twitter. I've tried to do blogging, which is working. Next week, when you bring your password for your website, 
will be able to connect the search engine to the website to see the traffic that you're getting. I'm going to see that, yes, I had a spike in traffic on that day that I tweeted. I'm going to see I posted one blog post every week, but my traffic is steady. That's maybe telling me that my blogs aren't working to give me more traffic. That'll be next week. This activity here, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna do it every single thing here, and you're not gonna need to turn this in for homework or anything like that. This class doesn't have any homework. This class doesn't have any certificate. This doesn't have anything like that. It has something maybe more important. It has results for your business. Uh, so what we'll talk about here is uh, starting to develop our our keywords and. In this activity, we've got two ways because this is also part of um, something very important to do, which is known as competitor analysis. What's the competition doing? What's working for them? What can I do better? This is something that my company does when we get a new client for several reasons. If we're going to be tasked with getting that company more clients and such, we need to know as much as possible about that company so that we can effectively Facebook, effectively tweet, effectively blog for them. We need to know as much about them and the competition as possible we need to see how hard is it going to be to, to crack that top 10 list. What kind of tactic, what kind of keywords, so we have to see the competition. In the activity we're about to do here, we're going to check the competition. We're going to see what's working for them. And then based on that, we're going to see what we can do and better. We're not going to steal their techniques. We're going to see what they're doing. I'm going to then synthesize a tactic based on what they're doing and what we're learning to do it better. So here I've got, go to a search engine and plug in a simple keyword from your topic. For the first page of results, write the title and description from each site, click on three results, and write notes for each feature, for each page featured. The way we'll do this is you can do it on paper, or we've got Microsoft Word on these computers. Let's do it this way. Go to your Word, uh, go to your Start menu down here, click Start, type Word, and we're going to launch Microsoft Word to make some notes. We'll, we'll do it this way because we can copy and paste a little easier instead of having to write stuff on our paper and write it wrong. So let's launch the Word software. <coughs> when you get Word, just click on the blank document. And at the top left, let's click the little save icon there. We'll save this. Again, if you save this on our desktop and don't take it with you, next time it'll be gone. But what we're creating here, you're not going to need to turn it in or anything like that. I can look at it. I can opine on it if you'd like. But if you want a copy of this, you have to email it to yourself or take it on a USB flash drive. Click Save up on the top, and I will select to save it on the desktop. And I'm going to save this as competitor analysis. I just want somewhere to write some notes. I can do it on paper if I want. And I'm going to get a word here because we can copy and paste. So I'm going to say, okay, part one basic keyword search. And the keyword is web design. Mm -hmm. Your keyword. I'm using web design as an example. If whatever your business is, think of one keyword. And this is the word I'm going to search for. 
Well, let me do a different one. I always do web design in these classes. I'm going to do bakeries. Let's say I've got the fictional company, Victor's Bakery. I want to look up my competition, bakeries. So I need to I need to pull back my pull up my web browser again, and for the best results, I'm going to do this on Google and Bing. I'll start with Google. I'll go back to google.com. I'm going to type that keyword, basic keyword, bakeries. It might give me suggestions. Ignore the suggestion for the moment. I search bakeries. What I'm going to do here then is I'm going to follow the links of real results. I'm not going to follow the Yelp link. I can do that if I want later. I could follow the result of an ad if I want, but remember ads are skewed because they pay for it. I could look at the result of these ratings. That would be valuable too. But I want to first focus on the organic results. I want to look for any results of a real company. And you will know which is a real company by looking at its name and looking at its description. Wikipedia, I'm not going to follow that link. That's worthless for me at the moment. Union Tribune, well, it's going to give you 25 best bakeries, but I want to see a website of a real company. And in my case, the one I'm seeing first is twigs.org. This result, I'm going to select all of this text and copy it. So you can click and drag to select this first result. Right click, copy. This is one of the results of this keyword search, one of my competitors. I'm going to copy that. I'll go back to Word, and if you know this trick, this is cool. If you right click, you get the option here paste as text only. If you know Control V to paste, it's going to bring it in with all the color and the link and all of that, and I don't like that. I just want to see the results, so right click and select Paste Option, Keep Text Only. I don't want the colors, and I don't want the links, and I don't want that other stuff to get in my way. Right click, Keep Text Only. This is one result from searching that keyword. I'm going to try to amass as many as I want. Uh, in my handout, what do I say? Uh, three results. That's very minimal. When we do this for a company, we do it for like five companies in Google and Bing. Notice I don't mention here Bing. You should, for the full picture, do the same analysis on Google and Bing. Just for our time's sake, I'm going to do it on Google. And I'm going to do one here. I will then copy and paste the results of a couple more. Do I see any more? San Diego Union, San Diego List, Edelweiss Bakery. Cool, I'll select that one. Paste as text only. It looks like one more, The Bakery, Design Collective. So I've got three. These are my competition. This is my competition. I'm going to see what I what comes up with them. Twigs Bakery San Diego. They wrote the keyword San Diego within their title. When we get to our site and such to edit it, we need to have we need to think about having a name that will help us get found not keyword stuffing, which is this is a fine line. The more we talk about it, the more it'll make sense. But I'm seeing in these results, we've got the keyword bakery. I searched for bakeries, but it gave me these results with bakery. So it's not wrong the way I searched, but I'm just saying that that's a result that I'm seeing in the top results. So maybe if my website is named the San Diego Bakeries, maybe I'm not going to appear because the competition is named bakery. 
So this document here, I'm going to make a note. That's why I have a, this, this document. Most results seem to favor bakery instead of bakeries. Because my keyword was bakeries. This is something I, I noticed, so I made a note of it. Twigs.org is number one, then Edelweiss Bakery San Diego is number two, then the Bakery Design Collective is number three. Number one result meant does not mention the keyword at all in their address. Again, it doesn't matter if you've got your keywords in your address. Number one result doesn't. This is clearly a nature company where I can buy hiking boots. No, I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter because I got a top result from what I searched. So your name, to some degree, doesn't matter like it used to. <clears throat> so I'm going to say URL, which is the address, the address of the company. URL doesn't use keyword. Here we have this little blurb, this little snippet, this description. Twigs is a boutique bakery specializing in cakes for all occasions, weddings, birthdays, parties. We have two cafe coffee houses in University Heights. It's a very good description. It hits a lot of keywords of what people might be searching for. Boutique bakery. I can find any bakery anywhere, but I'm a hipster and I need a boutique bakery. So that's a keyword that I hit there. Okay, weddings, birthdays, parties. I'm going to have a party. I want a nice little intimate party, after party for my wedding, because it's my birthday, and it hit those keywords. Coffee house. Great, I need a new place to go hang out and write my blog with a latte. So there's that keyword. University Heights, down the block. Great. So that description there. Description. One of the most valuable pieces of real estate of your site or on your site. Meaning, there's a place on my site where I go to edit the description of my site. And that's my first chance to make a first impression. That's me getting judged by the cover. Me as a book getting, <coughs> getting judged by its cover. That's on the cover. That's the first thing people see. And that's the place where people make a decision to click or not. So that little description area should be optimized, should have keywords, should have my description, have, should have my location, maybe even my phone number. Why don't, why don't I put my phone number right away there? If I'm a caterer, I might want to put there, um, you know, boutique catering studio in San Diego, call us now for your first free consultation, 619, whatever. I have that little piece of information there to capture leads for impressions which could lead to conversions. What to write there is going to depend on your company. I can't always tell you what to write there, but you're going to think about keywords, you're going to think about what's valuable for people to see at a glance. Edelweiss Bakery they have the keyword San Diego up on their title again, so I'm seeing that they've got the keyword San Diego. I didn't think about searching San Diego. Am I located in San Diego and would it be valuable? It might. I might be in East Lake, so putting San Diego might not be so valuable. But I'm starting to see here these results of bakeries all seem to have San Diego in title. This first line is the title, this is the description, this is the address, or the URL. The title of my website for these results I've shown San Diego. Maybe there's so much competition that it is valuable to have San Diego in this space of bakeries. The address is kind of a big, hard-to-spell address. Again, doesn't quite matter. Metal Vice Bakery, sandiego.com. They're verging for me a little bit more to a cumbersome address that I would not recommend if they hired us. I, 
if we were going to start off and they hired us, I wouldn't recommend. You don't need to get, you don't need to stuff San Diego into your address. Edelweissbaker.com would work. But possibly they may have other locations in Los Angeles, in Phoenix, etc. So all you want to do is add the location if it relates to an actual location. Question? Okay. So Edelweiss Bakery in Rancho Bernardo. So they mentioned that address. A full-service European bakery, family-owned and operated, specializing in European-style baked goods, wedding, and then it cuts off. You don't have a big spot there to write an essay about your company. You have about 70 characters or so. And we're seeing here it's cutting off. So the most important stuff, you want to put it early on. San Bernardino, Rancho Bernardino. Good. European bakery, if someone's looking for that. Family owned, yes, I want to I want to frequent a local company rather than a big box chain. European style bakery. So they said European twice. That could get found. Is it picking up, like when you insert, is it picking up just what you're seeing there on the page, or is it also picking up what's behind the dot dot dot? Everything. Okay. The search engines analyze your site completely, and whatever keywords are on the site, that could get you ranked. Okay. Yes. My question was kind of similar. I searched on the same Google and the little description was different on both. Mm -hmm. um, for so the same really company? That more specifically. And it's for the same company that are both different? Same name. Yeah. What might be the thing about that is that the company might have changed the description recently, but it hasn't been updated on one of them. Probably Google, because it's such the bigger search engine, it has a lot of websites to analyze. So it might not have seen the most latest version of the text. Gotcha. But uh, no, we can't really target each. Yeah, the Google one does seem like it would be a little bit older. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so again, these keywords. I'm starting to see wedding. I've seen wedding twice already. Wedding might also be a good keyword. To focus on. Old SEO was you found your one keyword and you used it over and over. You and all the spammers. Modern SEO is that you develop five keywords, ten keywords, and use them throughout your site smartly. The most modern SEO, is we'll get to that in a moment, the long tail keywords. The keywords that are not just one or two little words, a complete, a more complete sentence that is very specific. I develop a couple of those, two, three, four, five long tail keywords, which I would really call them long tail phrases, and use those phrases throughout your site, and on Twitter, and on Facebook, and on your email newsletter, and on your blog. And lastly, the San Diego Bakery, the bakery design collective.com. The bakery will be participating in the Open House San Diego event Saturday, October 5th, 2015 in architecture and urban design event hosted by etc. So they've got bakery, they've got event, a date. Either they have not updated it or Google hasn't seen their latest update. And we can tell, we can wake up the search engines. Something's new. Stop showing the old thing. We can do that next week when we connect the search engines to our website. Part of this competitor analysis also is that I will actually click on the link and do some more reconnaissance. I'm going to swallow my pride and click on a competitor's link and give them a little traffic, yes, but we have to. I'm going to click on their link, and then I'm going to, as, as best as possible, as objectively as possible, write about what's good and what's bad about their site to compare my own site. Because the search engines look at a lot of things, including the design of the site, the usability of the site. Is it hard to navigate? Is it hard to find things? Is, is the website, you know, does it have suddenly a video that plays and blasts you awake? All of these things also go into consideration.
So the number one result is twigs.org. And notice I forgot to say, .com doesn't matter anymore. Everyone wants the .com. .coms are taken. The web has been around 27 years. .coms are getting harder and harder to find at a reasonable price. Someone wanted to sell me victor.com for like $1,000. I don't need it. I've got vmcinc.net. That's where I get traffic from. So having a .org, .net, .biz, whatever, doesn't really matter. There's a bunch of brand new crazy names out there. There's .aero, I guess if you're an airline. There's dot, I believe there's dot condo, if you're a condo association. There's dot, I think there's even dot attorney at the moment. There's all of these ones, uh, even crazy ones. Dot ninja, yes, there's a dot ninja. There's a dot cool. So the problem, however, is that most of us are used to dot com. And so if I've got victor.cool and someone doesn't really know it that on the front of the on the front of their mind, they're gonna go to victor.com and see the spammer. So as this becomes more common knowledge and used, these will really take off. But right now there's a bunch of new domain names out there, dot, uh, these dot extensions, that if you can't get victorsbakery.com, probably victorsbakery.cool exists. And yes, you're going to have to kind of swim up against the current for a little bit until this gains more wider acceptance. But you're going to engage in Twitter, you're going to engage in a blog, you're going to engage in an email newsletter, um, Pinterest, etc. And on all of those places, you're going to be promoting over and over and over victorsbakery.cool. And that will eventually supersede the .com because you're creating more content that the search engines deem worthy, there's your authority, to take over the, comp the competition. So my note here is going to say doing well without a dot com. On the site itself, I'm going to say the good and the bad about it. I might not have the language of a, of a professional, of a web designer, to say, yes, this content is above the fold, so it, it really works well with your eye tracking. Okay, you don't know the terminology of web design. All you need to do is write um, objectively, subjectively, what you do and don't like about it. I'm looking at this site. I like their logo at the top there. It really stands out. It really gives me the idea that it is, uh, you know, uh, you know, a green... Um, sort of like uh, enviro-friendly kind of website which aligns with my values perhaps that's going to be a draw for me. So I'm going to say I like the logo. I like that the phone number is right at the top there. like the easy access to phone number. These greens are nice. Maybe I like the green color scheme. As I look at the other websites and I start to see a pattern of certain designs and concepts and styles, that might be telling me this is the current trend. So either I could engage in that trend well, as well, or I can say, well, what's the next trend? The problem, of course, is we don't know where it'll go. So if every website that I go to the competitor analysis for. <coughs> if every website I see has a cool slideshow that shows off my amazing baked goods, that's telling me it might be useful for me, for my website, to have a cool slideshow. Yes? So, uh, this website, I was looking at the one that's using like tables, and it's not using even HTML code. That makes a difference? Is that Yes, it does make a difference. This is the code of this website is in the older style. It, the, the style of it is pretty passe. Yeah. So even with old, well, this is interesting, however, because it still says WordPress right there. So it's using old, not good technology anymore, and still they've overcome it to be number one. So that's something to make a note of. But. Um, if we want to make a note here, uses old technology. Tables. 
If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But basically, that's opposed to modern, um, as opposed to modern techniques, which would be like WordPress, or Wix, or Squarespace, you know, these modern things. Uh, again, you might not have the language of, of to say what's, what's good or bad from a technical point of view, but just actually sort of analyzing the site, you can create, you can, you can opine about it. Site by six, succeed, succeed, oh, I get it, succeed. Um, haven't updated their copyright recently. They have a blog. They have a Twitter and a Facebook. You're going to see that <laughs> over and over. You're going to see that over and over. You're going to see that you've got all of this social media nowadays. SEM. They have a gallery. So design-wise, I don't like this weird floating picture up there. To me, it looks like a tablecloth. But it's supposed to be, I guess, the side of a cake. So I don't quite like that. I think it would look a little bit nicer if it wasn't there. And yes, I just hacked into their site and changed their site. So I would like it a little better if, um, if it was like that. That's a little cleaner. They didn't have to show off that picture. Yeah, exactly. How can you, can you do anything about competitors who show up who are now out of business, but they're still, you know, because they had a keyword, they still pop up? Mm, not really. Is them to or saying, listen, you know, the place is closed, the last review was two years ago? I believe there might be a mechanism in the search engines to, to do that, but... Uh, well, just write a review and say, hey, this place is closed? Yeah, exactly. Go over to to Yelp and um, and see if that will help. You know, um, because it's not it's not very fair that the um, the competitor is still open and you're not. Uh, you are, and they're and they're and they're in your way. Oh, so yeah, somebody did it on Yelp. They did do it, but it still shows up because they of their keyword the keyword on Yelp. Yeah, so they might not have a website, but if they're still active on Yelp. Well, because, I mean, somebody on Yelp posted they were closed already, hmm. but yet, because the keywords in their title, they still show up in your search. Hmm. The best that we can do is is for ourselves to be the best that we can, and then eventually we will uh, take over. over. They'll go, on, they'll go, yes. All right, so here, their website's better. Um, so I can make a note of that. I don't like don't like weird floating cake image. Should center logo. Whatever, it's 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 objective. It's subjective. You can write whatever you want about these sites, what feels right, what feels wrong. You might not have the language about what's good and bad, but you know what they say about art. Um, I know what I like. Is that the phrase? There's no bad art, but I know what I like. Um, so I would do the same thing with the other competition. I would go back, I would go look at Edelweiss, I would see how they're set up. Okay, completely different design. Their logo's right at the center, big text everywhere to read easily. Menus up on here. I'm kind of not liking that. The menus up here, even though you've got such an empty big spot. Well, it needs this such a big spot because these are so big here, and this is kind of going off the edge for some reason. We've got our frequently asked questions. Contact us about us, send something. But I think on my monitor it's just smaller. That's why it doesn't look that good. Which might also be actually a factor. This website might not be mobile friendly. That's a big thing to write here. Matters a lot nowadays. Mobile friendly? Hmm? It might not be. So, mobile friendly is very important nowadays. That simply means that your website looks good on a mobile device. One quick way to test it, it's not always 
the best way. But one quick way is if you resize your web browser screen like this, and if it sort of rearranges itself to look nice, especially tall and thin like a phone, that often means it's mobile friendly. This one is not. I have to scroll around. Have you been to a website on your phone that the text is tiny? You have to zoom in. That's usually an indicator it's not mobile friendly. A good website is going to fill your screen nicely and be very readable, mobile friendly. A modern software like WordPress or Wix or whatever can let you do that very easily. Make a, mo make a mobile friendly website. The search engines now, especially Google, are saying your website better be mobile friendly because more and more traffic is coming on mobile devices. So if you've got an existing website and it doesn't it doesn't change. It's also known as responsive web design. If your website doesn't respond to the size of your screen and it's not mobile friendly, that might be hurting your SEO. I am curious. Sometimes there's, there's tricks that you can do. I'm going to load this website on my browser, on my mobile device here. Hello. San Diego. Flowers at Rice Bakery. All right, let's see on my mobile device. On my mobile device, it did seem to to look good. They must be doing some other technique. They're probably doing adaptive web design to adapt to the right screen rather than responsive, because it's not always the case that you can simply resize your web browser and you'll see a result. In this case, I, I, was, I was fooled, but I'm on my mobile device and on the mobile it looks nice. The text is nice and big, I'm seeing good chunks of information at a time, so they're probably mobile friendly with some other technique. Nowadays you want to make sure your website is uh, responsive, you've got responsive web design. The most important contact information is at the top. When are they open? Phone number? Address? So depending on your business, but oftentimes, the most important info it has to be above the fold. Above the fold is a concept that comes from newspapers. You got a newspaper, remember those? And they are uh, tall and then they're folded and they're stacked. The front page, everything is important on the front page. It's the front page. But when they stack them, they're folded in half and you can only see above the fold. Everything's important on the front page, but that's the most important. Then you get it and you see every, every importance, important thing. On websites, we still have that concept above the fold, which is what's the first screen full of information that you see before scrolling down? The problem, of course, is I've got a nice big 19-inch screen, and you've got a 17-inch one, and you've got a huge projector, and you've got a little device. The concept of above the fold isn't the same as it used to be. So the most important stuff, you want to have it above as high as possible to the top, because that's the first thing people will see. And hopefully it's going to be useful to them. This is very useful for me. I'm going to call them right now and buy something, or I'm going to get their address and visit the location. Slideshow. So this is the second site where I'm seeing a slideshow showing off all the work. A whimsical kinds of text and such. That one's a little too small here. Uh, too many fonts, I'm going to say here. This font design, this font design, this font design, this font design. That's not good. You want to limit it to two font designs. This is getting way too schizophrenic. You've got this design of a font and that design of a font all over the place here. So all of this is not quite fitting very well visually. But I'm liking these cakes, making me hungry. For a more detailed description, click here. I'm in a big bunch of empty space for some reason. I hope they don't have invisible text there. 
So it might be that the bakery industry in San Diego has such a low bar that my website could be way better than this. So you wouldn't know that until you do competitor analysis. One thing that I will give you as a tip here, if you ever have any phone number and such, address, you make sure it's text. Because you can make a graphic of, of your phone number, and that's not so good. The search engines understand plain text better than a picture. This is a great picture. The search engine doesn't know what it is. The search engines are getting smarter. Computers are getting smarter. And we, we see these experiments that are very cool where you feed a picture of someone to a computer and it'll tell you, that's George Washington. Well, that's because it can process millions of photos of George Washington to tell you it's George Washington. I put my picture to that computer, it won't know who I am. It doesn't have any reference to know that's a picture of Victor Campos. So when you've got your phone number, as a picture, it has a harder time dealing with it than text, because text the computer can understand instantly. I noticed that on twigs.org, their phone number was in the graphic, and it was graphic text, which is not so good anymore. You want text text for your phone, for your address, because that's where Yelp can find that and give directions to your business. If it's in a graphic, Yelp can't understand that graphic to find your picture. And yes, these things will get smarter and it eventually will. Why wait? Set it up properly now. Maybe the search engines will say and make it more harsh. If you have any text that is a graphic, that it's important, we're going to penalize you. Who knows? They change their algorithm all the time. Things that used to work don't work anymore. And sometimes things that used to work now hurt you. That's annoying. They're moving the goalposts, changing the rules. Yes, but if we're going to play in their playground, we have to follow their rules. If we want to get found, because no one's going to that phone book as much as they used to. It's all about searching. Going to Bing, going to Google, asking my phone. Let's search. We can go on for this, but I want to take a short break. And then we'll look at the long tail strategy, the new way. And then we'll see if we can find a little time for, uh, for the demonstration. 12.20, we'll take a 10-minute break, um, 12.30. And then when we come back, we'll do a little bit more.